Hey there, welcome back to Story Slices, where we slice through the best Reddit tales just for you. Let's dive right into the first story. The first one is the title story, and it starts like this. I never thought I'd end up in a heated dispute with my neighbor over my own backyard pool, but that's exactly what happened last summer. Looking back, I can hardly believe how quickly things spiraled out of control. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me start from the beginning. My name's Mike, and I've lived in the Sunnyside Estates neighborhood for about five years now. It's a nice, quiet suburban community mostly families and retirees. We have an homeowner association that takes care of the common areas and enforces some basic rules, but it's pretty laid back overall. My house is on a corner lot, with a decent-sized backyard that slopes down towards a small wooded area behind the property line. When I first moved in, the backyard was pretty bare, just a plain grass lawn, but I had always dreamed of having my own pool, so I started saving up. It took a few years, but I finally had enough set aside to put in an in-ground pool last spring. I got all the proper permits, hired a reputable contractor, and had it installed without any issues. It wasn't huge, but it was perfect for my needs, about 15 by 30 feet, with a small patio area around it. I was so excited to finally have my own private oasis. That first summer with the pool was amazing. I spent nearly every weekend lounging by the water, swimming laps, and hosting small get-togethers with friends. A few of the neighborhood kids would occasionally ask if they could come swim, which I was fine with as long as their parents were present. Everything was great. Then the Johnsons moved in next door that fall. Karen and Steve seemed nice enough at first. We exchanged pleasantries over the fence and did the usual new neighbor small talk. They had two young kids, and I could tell Karen was thrilled to see the pool in my backyard. She made a few comments about how great it would be for the kids to have a pool so close by. I didn't think much of it at the time. As winter came and went, I looked forward to another relaxing pool season. Little did I know the drama that was about to unfold. It was a warm Saturday in early May when I decided to open the pool for the season. I had just finished skimming out some leaves and was about to test the water chemistry when I heard the unmistakable sound of my gate latch opening. I turned to see Karen striding into my backyard, with her kids in tow carrying pool floats and toys. Oh good, you're opening the pool, Karen called out cheerfully. The kids have been so excited to come swimming. I was caught off guard. Ah, uh, hi Karen, I didn't realize you were planning to come over today. She waved her hand dismissively. Oh don't worry. We won't be any trouble. The kids will mostly entertain themselves. Although if you wouldn't mind watching them for a bit later, I need to run some errands. I blinked in confusion. I'm sorry but I can't babysit today. And I wasn't really planning on having guests over right now. Karen's smile faltered slightly. What do you mean? The pool's open, isn't it? Well yes, but it's my private pool. I don't mind if you want to come over sometimes when invited, but you can't just show up unannounced like this. I tried to explain gently. Her eyes narrowed. Excuse me? This is the neighborhood pool. All residents are allowed to use it. I was dumbfounded. No Karen. This is my personal pool that I paid to have installed on my private property. It's not a community pool. Don't be ridiculous, she scoffed. I specifically asked our realtor about pool access when we bought the house. He assured me this was an homeowner association amenity that all homeowners could use. I took a deep breath, trying to stay calm. I'm sorry, but your realtor was mistaken. This is my pool. I have all the documentation proving I own it. You're welcome to check with the homeowner association if you don't believe me. Karen's face was turning red. This is outrageous. You can't just hog an entire pool for yourself in a neighborhood like this. What are you? Some kind of selfish jerk? Please lower your voice, I said firmly. I've been nothing but polite to you, but you're trespassing right now. I'm going to have to ask you to leave my property. We're not going anywhere, she shrieked. This is a common area, and we have every right to be here. Kids, get in the pool. I quickly stepped in front of her children before they could jump in. Absolutely not. Do not enter my pool without permission. Karen, this is your last warning before I call the police for trespassing. Go ahead and call them, she yelled. They'll tell you that you can't restrict access to shared facilities like this. I pulled out my phone. Fine, fine. Let's settle this right now then. As I dialed cop, Karen stormed off to the side of the yard, furiously tapping at her own phone, presumably to call the homeowner association. I could hear her ranting to her kids about the mean pool man as I waited for the operator to pick up. I succinctly explained the situation to dispatch, emphasizing that I wasn't in any danger, but there was an ongoing trespassing issue. I needed help resolving. They said they'd send an officer over shortly. While we waited, Karen paced back and forth, intermittently yelling things like, you'll be sorry when the homeowner association hears about this, and just wait until the police get here and put you in your place. I did my best to ignore her and focus on finishing my pool maintenance. About 15 minutes later, a patrol car pulled up out front. Officer Williams introduced himself and asked what was going on. I calmly explained the situation, that this was my private pool on my property, but my neighbor was insisting it was a community pool and refusing to leave. Karen immediately launched into her version of events, talking a mile a minute about how I was denying access to shared homeowner association amenities and discriminating against her family. Officer Williams held up his hand. Ma'am, please slow down. 
Let's start with the basics. Whose property are we standing on right now? This is homeowner association common area, Karen insisted. I shook my head. No, this is my private property. I own this house and everything within the property lines, including the pool. The officer turned to me. Do you have documentation to verify your ownership? Yes, absolutely, I replied. I have the deed to my property inside, as well as all the permits and paperwork from when the pool was installed last year. All right, I'd like to see those please, he said. I quickly retrieved the relevant documents and handed them over. Officer Williams reviewed them carefully while Karen fidgeted impatiently. After a few minutes, he handed the papers back to me. Everything appears to be in order. This pool is indeed on private property owned by Mr. Johnson. Karen's jaw dropped. That's impossible. The realtor told us? Ma'am, I don't know what your realtor may have told you, but these official documents clearly show that this is not homeowner association property, the officer interrupted. You are currently trespassing on private property. But, but Karen sputtered. I'm going to have to ask you and your children to leave the premises immediately, Officer Williams continued. If you refuse, you will be removed and cited for trespassing. Do you understand? Karen's face was a mix of shock and outrage. She opened her mouth as if to argue further, then thought better of it. Fine, she snapped. Kids, we're leaving. Apparently some people are too selfish to share. As they stormed out of my yard, Officer Williams turned back to me. I apologize for the disturbance, sir. You're well within your rights to call us again if she returns uninvited. I'd also recommend documenting any future incidents, just in case. I thanked him profusely for his help. As the patrol car drove away, I breathed a sigh of relief, hoping that would be the end of it. Unfortunately, I severely underestimated Karen's stubbornness and entitlement. Over the next few weeks, she tried everything she could think of to gain access to my pool. She called the homeowner association repeatedly to complain, but they confirmed what I had said. The pool was my private property and not under their jurisdiction. She even tried going door to door to rally the neighbors against me, spinning some tale about how I had stolen the community pool for myself. Thankfully, most of my other neighbors knew the truth and didn't buy into her lies. A few even came by to warn me about what she was saying and offer their support. The situation came to a head about a month after the initial confrontation. It was a sweltering Sunday afternoon, and I was enjoying a peaceful swim when I heard a commotion from the other side of my privacy fence. Suddenly, Karen's kids came hurtling over the fence, followed by Karen herself clumsily climbing over. Before I could even react, the kids had cannonballed into the pool. I quickly climbed out, grabbing my phone. Karen, what the hell do you think you're doing? Get your kids out of my pool right now. She smirked triumphantly. We have just as much right to be here as you do. This is a shared neighborhood resource and you can't keep it all to yourself. We've been through this already, I said through gritted teeth. This is my private property. You are trespassing and I'm calling the police. Go ahead, she taunted. I've done my research. Legally, you can't exclude us from using this pool. I didn't bother arguing further. I just dialed cop. As I was explaining the situation to the dispatcher, I saw Karen pull out her own phone and start live streaming on Facebook. Hello everyone, she said in a sickeningly sweet voice. I'm coming to you live from our neighborhood pool, where some people think they can discriminate and deny access to hardworking families. I tuned out her ranting and focused on relaying the facts to the cop operator. They said they'd send officers right away. While we waited, Karen continued her unhinged monologue to her phone camera, painting herself as some kind of social justice warrior standing up to the evil pool tyrant. Her kids splashed around happily, seemingly oblivious to the tension. About 10 minutes later, two police cruisers pulled up. I recognized Officer Williams from last time, accompanied by a female officer. As soon as they entered the backyard, Karen turned her camera on them. Oh good, the police are here to defend our rights. Officers, this man is illegally restricting access to the neighborhood pool. I demand that you remove him from the premises immediately. Officer Williams sighed. Ma'am, please put your phone away. We've been through this before. This is not a neighborhood pool. It's private property. That's a lie. Karen shrieked. I have proof that this is an H. Homeowner Association amenity. Mike forged those documents you saw last time. I started to protest, but Officer Williams held up his hand. Sir, I'll need to see your property documentation again, please. I quickly retrieved the papers. The female officer, Rodriguez, according to her nameplate, began ushering Karen's kids out of the pool while her partner reviewed my documents. Everything appears to be in order, Officer Williams confirmed after a few minutes. Ma'am, I don't know what kind of proof you think you have, but I can assure you these are legitimate property records. You are trespassing on private property. Karen's face contorted in rage. This is discrimination. You're just covering for him because he's... Ma'am? Ma'am? Officer Rodriguez cut her off sharply. That's enough. You need to leave these premises immediately or you will be arrested. Do you understand? For a moment, I thought Karen might actually try to fight the officers. But after a tense few seconds, she deflated. Fine, she spat. But this isn't over. I'll be contacting my lawyer. As the officers escorted Karen and her kids off my property, I breathed a sigh of relief. Surely now she would finally give up this ridiculous crusade. I couldn't have been more wrong.
The next morning, I woke up to find my yard had been vandalized overnight. Toilet paper strewn everywhere, trash dumped in the pool, and pool Nazi spray painted on my fence. I didn't have proof but I was pretty sure I knew who was responsible. I spent most of the day cleaning up the mess and filed another police report. Officer Williams came by to document the damage and advised me to install security cameras which I promptly ordered. A few days later, I received a certified letter from a lawyer representing Karen Johnson. It was full of legal jargon, but the gist was that she was suing me for discriminatory exclusion from shared neighborhood amenities or some such nonsense. I'll admit, I panicked a bit at first, but after consulting with my own lawyer, I felt much better. He assured me the lawsuit was baseless and would likely be thrown out quickly. We filed a strong response refuting all of Karen's claims and included copies of my property records and pool installation permits. In the meantime, Karen's harassment campaign continued. She posted flyers around the neighborhood calling for a boycott of my illegal private pool. She tried to get me fined by the homeowner association for various made-up violations. She even showed up at my workplace once to complain to my boss about what a terrible neighbor I was. Thankfully, the security cameras I installed caught her in the act several times, trespassing, vandalizing my property, and attempting to tamper with my pool equipment. Each incident was meticulously documented and reported to the police. After about a month of this constant stress, we finally had our day in court. Karen showed up with a smug grin, clearly expecting an easy victory. Her smile quickly faded as the judge reviewed the evidence. It took less than an hour for the judge to dismiss Karen's lawsuit with prejudice, meaning she couldn't refile. He scolded her harshly for wasting the court's time with frivolous litigation, and warned that she could face sanctions if she continued this behavior. But the judge wasn't done. Based on the police reports and video evidence I had submitted, he granted my lawyer's request for a restraining order against Karen. She was legally barred from coming within 100 feet of my property or contacting me in any way. As we left the courthouse, I could hear Karen wailing dramatically to anyone who would listen about the miscarriage of justice. I just walked away, savoring my vindication. Word of Karen's humiliating defeat spread quickly through the neighborhood. Most people were relieved to see her get her comeuppance. A few neighbors even stopped by to congratulate me on standing my ground. To my relief, Karen and her family moved out a few months later. I heard through the grapevine that her husband had finally put his foot down after all the legal fees and fines she had racked up with her pool crusade. They sold the house and relocated to another state. The new neighbors who moved in are a lovely young couple who actually asked permission before coming over to swim. What a concept! These days, I can finally enjoy my pool in peace, but I have to admit, a small part of me misses the drama sometimes. At least it makes for a good story at parties. Looking back, I'm glad I stood firm and didn't let Karen bully me into giving up my property rights. It was a stressful few months, but in the end, justice prevailed. And hey, at least I got some free security cameras out of the whole ordeal. So if you ever find yourself dealing with an entitled neighbor who thinks they own your stuff, remember my story. Document everything, know your rights, and don't back down. With patience and persistence, you can beat the Karens of the world at their own game. Oh, and one last tip, maybe don't install a pool if you have crazy neighbors, or at least build a really tall fence first. Update, update. It's been about a year since the whole pool saga with Karen, and I thought I'd give you all an update on how things have played out since then. After Karen and her family moved away, I honestly thought that would be the end of it. I was looking forward to finally enjoying my pool in peace without any drama. For a few months, that's exactly what happened. The new neighbors who moved in next door were great. They respected my property and we even became friends, occasionally having cookouts together by the pool. But as it turns out, Karen wasn't quite done with her vendetta against me. About six months after she moved, I got another certified letter in the mail. This time it wasn't from a lawyer, but from Karen herself. She was demanding that I pay her $50,000 for emotional distress and loss of summer enjoyment due to being unfairly denied access to the pool. I couldn't help but laugh when I read it. The letter was full of ridiculous claims and thinly veiled threats. She said if I didn't pay up, she'd expose my discriminatory behavior to the media and ruin my reputation. Of course, I had no intention of giving her assent. I immediately contacted my lawyer and showed him the letter. He agreed it was absurd and advised me to ignore it, but to keep it on file just in case. A few weeks later, I started getting weird phone calls. Someone would call, breathe heavily into the phone, and then hang up. This happened several times a day for about a week. I suspected it might be Karen, but I couldn't prove it. Then, out of the blue, a reporter from a local news station showed up at my door. Apparently, they'd received an anonymous tip about a homeowner who was illegally privatizing community resources. It didn't take a genius to figure out where that tip came from. I calmly explained the situation to the reporter, showing them all the documentation proving my ownership of the pool. To their credit, once they saw the evidence, they quickly realized there was no real story here. They apologized for bothering me and left. 
but Karen wasn't done yet. A few days later, I woke up to find my yard covered in flyers. They had a badly photoshopped picture of me with devil horns, along with the caption Pool Nazi Strikes Again, and a long rambling text about how I was destroying the community spirit. I was furious, but I knew I had to stay calm and handle this the right way. I called the police to file another report, and then I got to work cleaning up the mess. As I was picking up the flyers, my doorbell rang. It was my next-door neighbor, looking concerned. Hey Mike, he said, I saw what happened. I've got my security camera footage from last night if you want it. Caught the whole thing on video. I could have hugged him right then and there. That would be incredible. Thanks, I said. We reviewed the footage together, and sure enough, there was Karen, sneaking around my yard at 2 a.m., plastering flyers everywhere. It was clear as day. You could even see her face in some of the shots. I immediately called my lawyer and emailed him the video. He was thrilled. This is exactly what we needed, he said. She's violating the restraining order. We can take her back to court for this. Over the next few days, my lawyer worked on filing the necessary paperwork. Meanwhile, I focused on damage control. I went around the neighborhood talking to anyone who had seen the flyers. I calmly explained the situation and showed them the court documents proving my case. Most people were understanding, and a few even offered to testify on my behalf if needed. About a week later we had our court date. Karen showed up looking smug, clearly thinking she had the upper hand somehow. Her face fell when she saw me walk in with my lawyer, a thick folder of evidence in hand. The judge was not happy to see Karen again. He reviewed the new evidence, the threatening letter, the phone records showing the harassing calls, the news station statement about the false tip, and of course, the damning security camera footage. Karen tried to defend herself, claiming she was just standing up for the community and that I was twisting everything to make her look bad. But the evidence was overwhelming. The judge's verdict was swift and harsh. Karen was found in contempt of court for violating the restraining order. She was sentenced to 30 days in jail and ordered to pay a $5,000 fine. The judge also extended the restraining order, making it permanent and expanding it to cover any form of contact, including through third parties. As Karen was led away by the bailiff, she started yelling about how unfair it all was and how she'd appeal. The judge simply banged his gavel and said, any appeal will be noted in the record. Next case? After court, my lawyer patted me on the back. You handled this perfectly, he said. By staying calm and letting the evidence speak for itself, you've shut this down for good. I felt an immense wave of relief wash over me. It was finally, truly over. In the weeks that followed, I received a few messages from mutual acquaintances, telling me that Karen's husband had finally had enough. He filed for divorce while she was serving her jail sentence. Apparently, this wasn't the first time her behavior had caused major problems, but it was definitely the last straw for him. As for me, life has pretty much returned to normal. I still enjoy my pool regularly, and I've even started hosting small gatherings for the neighbors now and then. It's nice to be able to share it on my own terms, with people who respect boundaries. I've learned a lot from this whole experience. I've realized the importance of standing up for yourself, even when it's uncomfortable. I've also learned the value of good neighbors and a strong support system. And perhaps most importantly, I've learned to always, always keep good records and invest in security cameras. So that's where things stand now. Karen is out of my life for good. I've got a great relationship with my neighbors, and I can finally enjoy my backyard oasis in peace. It was a long and stressful journey, but I came out the other side stronger and wiser. To anyone else dealing with difficult neighbors or entitled people, remember, stay calm, know your rights, document everything, and don't be afraid to stand your ground. It might be tough in the moment, but in the end, doing the right thing pays off. And hey, if all else fails, you can always write a Reddit post about it, right? Are you hungry for more slices of stories? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to never miss out on any videos. See you tomorrow at Story Slices.